Have you ever watched a film and thought to yourself, I think I could honestly make a better movie than this? I think that's exactly what Zack Snyder did with Star Wars at some point in time, because we have Rebel Moon, a sprawling sci-fi saga that's now two parts deep with a promise of a third to come, and director's cuts because it's Zack Snyder. Of course there's a director's cut. I didn't like Rebel Moon Part 1, but maybe Part 2 will be better. Maybe Part 1 was just a build, a foundation to get us to an amazing second outing, something akin to an Empire Strikes Back, or a Two Towers. Let's find out with a spoiler-free review of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. <laughs> It's shit. The movie is worse than part one. It's a shit show from top to bottom. I'm gonna break it down in a second, but I would love if you hit subscribe on the channel, if you appreciate honesty, if you appreciate a film critic that's not afraid to speak his mind for better and worse, might not always align with your opinion, but I'm having a good time talking about mine. Film is subjective. And of course with Snyder, there's gonna be those that love everything he does because they really like this director and his approach and his unconventional way of telling a story. For instance, in Rebel Moon Part Two, The Scar Giver, there's a section of this film that's about 20 or so minutes long where we just go down the table where each character individually gives their backstory for a few minutes like it's the intro to Suicide Squad all over again. I don't really think I've ever seen this before in a movie. <laughs> Typically when you do the background of characters, it's done through conversation. Occasionally you'll get hints of a backstory. I've never seen it where he just straight up goes, all right, it's your turn now, Peggy. Why don't you tell us what's going on? All right, Mark, it's your, it's your turn now. You wanna know how I got these scars? Let me tell you. A couple minutes later, the next guy down the line who's eating his porridge goes, well, that's not exactly what happened to me, but I have a doozy of my own. And that's what the first full hour is. Hanging out on Farm Planet with some of these ragtag characters that we picked up from the first movie. Meanwhile, on the Dreadnought, the Empire has resurrected Nicholas Holt. It's not Nicholas Holt, but the actor looks eerily similar to him. I don't know if they're related. I, I could look, but I don't want to spend any more time on Rebel Moon 2 than I have to. It is established that Anakin Skywalker did not die from the fall 8,000 stories up. He lived, he survived, and he's Humpty dumpty back together in this one. He's now stronger than ever. We really have ourselves a Darth Vader character in this movie. Can't wait to see what surprises he has in store for our characters. None. No surprises. He's stronger and yet somehow at the same time not at all. Because regular folks with no superhuman strength are going to be able to go one on one against this guy without much of a problem. It just makes sense. I found the main premise to be incredibly ridiculous to begin with. We have this planet that harvests wheat and these evil empire guys are going to come down and request that they make them a bunch so that they can take back for their trip. And the best part is they have to do all this by hand. There's no technology that can assist them. And for some reason, the Empire has no way of doing it themselves. They need this small little village of idiots to produce all this product for them. It's, it's, it's asinine. And now, in this movie, the plot really is the same again. The Dreadnought's coming back. They're five days out. And they're going to want that product. Big time. So Korra has to rally the troops, she has to rally her people to fight back. So in five days time, they have to learn how to handle a weapon and themselves incredibly well to take on the forces coming at them. They also have to harvest all of this food that typically takes them like six months. They're gonna do that in less than a week. And they manage to find time to build like underground trenches and shit. It's just insanely dumb. And once the attack starts, we see the full force of this fleet. All these evil empire guys come down. There's like 50 ships. It's this epic shot. It looks like a video game cutscene, but it's kind of cool. There's some cool music at this part. But then those ships all just kind of disappear and only four touch down. Where'd they go? I don't know. I don't know. If you like the Zack Snyder slow motion, it's back. It's, it never left. It's still here. It's always here. People brushing their teeth. <laughs> Slow-mo speed up. Person waving. Slow-mo speed up. Person taking a shit. You better believe there's a slow-mo speed up. Maybe, okay, I'm being over the top, but this movie is as well. 
I think my favorite moment out of all the favorite moments I have, which is a lot because there's so many dumbass moments in this, is when the cool Asian chick with the double swords and the robot hands is fighting five or six guys for what felt like 25 minutes of the film. And then we finally cut over and there's, there's like 60 people just watching her. 60 villagers, a lot of kids, but there's also plenty of adults in there just watching they could pick up a rock or something. There's there's not a pitchfork lying around where you could jump in the fray and help her. It was so comically dumb. If you like that chanting that Zack Snyder seems to infuse into all of his movies, it's back. It's it's stronger than ever. She's a scar giver, make you work hard, make you spend hard, make you want all of her love. Evil Nicholas Holt refers to her as the scar giver right away at the beginning of the movie because she gave him a scar. He, he came up with the name. It's so stupid. The scar giver's back on her planet. I know it. We will go there. I mean, that's essentially the entire movie. He gets hurt, he's pissed at her, he wants revenge, they go back to the planet, they attack, the, the rebels fight back. Bingo, bango, bongo, penis, we have a film. And it's of course gonna lead in to part three, Rebel Moon, Tokyo Drift. If I could give you a positive about the movie, I would, but I cannot. So I'm just gonna move on and say, this is not good. I don't like what Zack Snyder has been putting out lately, and I'm actually very happy that the DCEU is done and they are deciding to move on. I think that's very much for the best, especially when it comes to writing. I don't think Snyder is a good writer. I think he can do some great things behind the lens of a camera. He just really hasn't for me lately. All of his movies still feel so small in comparison to the scale he's going for. Nothing feels realistic. Nothing feels like I can physically see and touch and feel and be there. It all seems artificial. And that's Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. The second part of what I hope will be a ending soon for this disgusting franchise. But I know some people liked Rebel Moon and they're probably head over heels for this one and that's fine. I don't... I, I, I don't care. I'm glad you liked it. I don't know why you watched this video. I made it very clear early on that this is not for me. I gave it a second chance though. Am I going to watch part three? Probably because I'm a movie critic and I like watching and talking about films, the good and the bad. Let me know your thoughts on Scargiver. Are you all in? Do you really like this franchise? Do you think this is exactly where Snyder needs to be? Or do you prefer him maybe take a step back? Get away from the pen and pad, let someone else handle that, and he can maybe just come up with the visuals. Although even the visuals in this movie, there's something that's just not flowing well. I think it's the the overuse of these kind of soft focus shots he does, where there's kind of a blur on half of the screen, not the other half, but then it'll go to some crisp shots next. This back and forth is really not working for me at all. But that's just me. I would love to hear from you. Let me know. Please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. It's exactly what it is. I just rant about random stuff. It's a fun time. If you like to laugh, you might find some enjoyment there as well. And I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. This is a one-man operation. I work my butt off to make the channel grow. Any support you can throw my way is really appreciated, and there's lots of great exclusive perks for you. All right, that's all I got. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.